That sun? It's not really there. It won't actually be above the horizon for another two minutes. The sunrise is an illusion. Earth's atmosphere bends the incoming rays of sunlight like a lens or a glass of water. So we see the image of the sun projected above the horizon before the physical sun is actually there. That sun behind me is a mirage, no more real than a shimmering image that hovers in the distance over a desert road on a hot day. Sunlight takes about eight minutes to reach Earth. So the sun is eight light minutes away. From Earth, we can only ever see the sun as it was eight minutes ago. And another thing, the sun doesn't really rise at all. The Earth turns and we turn with it. It may not look like it, but right at this moment, I'm moving faster than a jet plane. And so are you and everyone on Earth. While I'm at it, that horizon, it's not really there at all. There's no edge. The horizon is just another illusion. The distance between Earth and the outermost planet, Neptune, varies as the planets orbit the sun. On average, the light makes that trip in four hours. So for us on Earth, the Neptune we see is always four hours in the past, four light hours away. But the distances to the planets, even the farthest one, are mere baby steps on a much grander scale of the stars and galaxies. As soon as we leave the sun's immediate neighborhood, we need to change the unit of distance from light hours to light years. A light year is the yardstick of the cosmos. A single one is nearly 10 trillion kilometers, or about 6 trillion miles. It's a unit of distance just like a meter or a mile. It's the distance light travels in a year. The nearest star to the sun, Proxima Centauri, is a little more than four light years away from Earth. How far away is four light years? NASA's Voyager spacecraft moves at more than 56,000 kilometers an hour. Even at that astonishing speed, it would take Voyager more than 80,000 years to reach the nearest star. And the stars of the Pleiades cluster? 400 light years away. The ship of the imagination is equipped with a highly unusual capability, one of a kind, actually, that makes it possible for us to see what was happening when the light from a distant star or galaxy first set out on its long journey to Earth. When that light left the Pleiades about 400 years ago, Galileo was taking his first look through a telescope. A few years later, he tried to measure the speed of light, but he couldn't do it. He had a very clever plan but the technology of that era just wasn't good enough to measure the motion of anything that moves as fast as light. When we look at the Crab Nebula from Earth, we're seeing much farther back in time. The Crab Nebula was once a giant star 10 times the mass of the sun, until it exploded in a supernova. At its heart is a pulsar, a collapsed star the size of a city spinning 30 times a second. This pulsar's whirling magnetic field whips nearby electrons into a frenzy, accelerating them to almost the speed of light. They shine with a blue glow that lights up the tendrils of gas still unraveling from the supernova. The Crab Nebula is about 6,500 light years from Earth. According to some beliefs, that's the age of the whole universe. But if the universe were only 6,500 years old, how could we see the light from anything more distant than the Crab Nebula? We couldn't. There wouldn't have been enough time for the light to get to Earth from anywhere farther away than 6,500 light years in any direction. That's just enough time for light to travel through a tiny portion of our Milky Way galaxy. To believe in a universe as young as six or 7,000 years old is to extinguish the light from most of the galaxy 
Not to mention the light from all the hundred billion other galaxies in the observable universe.